What is good? We're back. We got another rookie prospect for you. Ooh, that was a really crispy one. That was the crispiest of boys. Yeah, that was that was a, a good seven eight right there. Seven point eight. Yeah, about to say strong. Uh, can't have eight. a whole number. Can't have a rookie score here. No, no, seven eight. He didn't say seven point eight. It's a seven eight. The graphic comes up on the screen. What are we doing today? <laughs> uh, well, graphics. rookie profiles, baby. We're still doing it. Already said that, but sure. Uh, we're going rookie profiles. We did uh, rookie profiles. We're doing. We did already did Zay Flowers rookie profiles. You we're almost said Jones. More rookie profiles, and then there's going to be uh, some more profiles. Um, so profiles on profiles on profiles. We are Jackson p- player profilers. That's accurate. Uh, we're gonna do no affiliation. Jackson Smith zero. Yeah. It's like an umpire calling the third strike. <laughs> Get him out. I don't think that's it, but sure. I see what you. I see what you did there. Uh, so what do you guys think of this? This fellows uh, seems to be, you know. Well, he's 20 some, years old, guy like people, that. Some people think he might be trending down. I don't know. Let's figure it out today. Six foot one ninety seven. Yeah. Out of Rockwell High School. Mm-hmm. And where? Texas? Yeah, Texas. Texas. Are mm-hmm. you sure? Mm-hmm. Didn't sound confident. Grew up watching Texas A&M and Oklahoma and mm. Texas. So did I, but I didn't live in Texas. But, I mean, that's what that's where they... So, Ohio State was a big change for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, five-star recruit. Projected to run a slow 40, though. That's that why people are mad at him. I don't think that's necessarily the reason. It's gotta be. It's not a hundred percent. I would say it's not the only reason. Only one year production. That's mm. probably really. No, I don't think it's that either. Well, then I don't know what it could be. It's, they're saying it's S A W F T. What does that mean? Soft. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. There could. There could be. Well, let's. Why don't we hit us with the good stuff and then <laughs> and we'll the get hang. and we'll get to the negative stuff. All right, well, let's good. get into the metrics. I, I guess overall, these are probably pretty good. Dominator, only in the 42nd percentile. Breakout age, strong, 75th percentile. To be noted, though, the Dominator, you know, when he was playing, there was two guys who were first-round picks on the team. Ballers, which during so, that top year. 12 picks. Is that a bad, even a bad Dominator with those guys on there? And on, I don't. On that team? No. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if that Dominator is over the course of his career or just his best breakout year, which would have been 2021. I mean, um, he only has like. <laughs> How many? He only has ten catches that weren't in that part of that year. So <clears throat> right, but you're playing more games like in his rook in his freshman year. So like mm-hmm. you know that that counts against you when you're not getting the work. So if you look at his 21 season, target share was 22.7 percent, which is in the 65th percentile. Uh, I think on Player Profiler they've changed it to like 16 percent target share, and maybe that's for the career, and that drops him down to the 35th percentile. I'm not really trying to count. Two seasons that he didn't really get yep. much work against him. So that one season in 21 where he had 112 targets and, and had more targets than both Olave and Garrett Wilson, albeit maybe they played less games than him that season. Uh, it's the, you know, A dots 8.8. That's not where you like it to be, but he is a slot wide receiver, which uh, yeah. might be the other I reason why people that, hate him. There's, there's another knock in there potentially because of only playing the slot, and it's typically going to keep your A dot down a little more in a lot of cases. Right. So Plus, you had Olave who could take the top off. A little bit more about this guy's bio. Comes from a very athletic family. Uh, brother plays for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Father played linebacker in college. His dad had them boys doing two-a-days since they were can remember being how old. Like, they were just... So, he's like... Uh, what are those? Uh, uh, the St. Browns. The St. Brown. Right. No, the, uh, the basketball family. The big baller brand. Oh, oh geez. I like the St. Browns <laughs> better. You're talking about the ball family. The ball family. Yeah, I like the St. Brown comp family sure. much big better. Big baller brand. Uh, another fun fact, uh, he, he was born Jackson Smith. His grandfather's name was in Jigba. He actually dropped his name after moving to America to help him get jobs, which is kind of fucked up that he would have to do that. But when his grandfather died, he was very close to him. He decided to put the Njigba on his jersey. That's pretty, that's and keep pretty it cool. There. Um, you talk to P. 
people around the Ohio State facility, which I haven't. I'm just referencing people that have. You don't? Uh, I'm best friends with um, uh, with um, uh, Brian Hartline. You should just hit me up. Well, speaking of Brian Hartline, he said this is the best wide receiver he's ever coached. So a lot of good players have come through. A lot of good receivers come through Brian Hartline. State. What he meant was the best slot receiver he's ever oh, okay. coached. Okay. <laughs> well... Then you ask Garrett Wilson. I He's watched a the slot guy. He's protecting his own. I watched a video where, <laughs> fair, where uh, they asked all three of them, Olave, Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigga. They said, who's the most athletic out of all you guys? And Jackson Smith and Jigga was like, I think that's probably me. And the other two guys were like, yeah, he's the best out of all yeah, of us. Yeah, I mean, like, he's been in boot athletically, camp. Athletically. What do you want? And... But, like, that's the knock is that he's not athletic because he doesn't not run a fast 40. And it's like, no, the short area quickness and yeah. burst is yeah. off the charts. So... Uh, I, you know, strong athletic family. I don't know about the softness. You know, I guess he did. I meant because of the because uh, he didn't play at all this year with a hamstring injury. What did right? he have to prove? True. I mean, yeah. I like he he knocked it out of the park and was basically considered the best overall wide receiver in the game, and and the top wide receiver to come out. And then by by being hurt and not playing, it definitely like knocked him down a bit. Like now it's a question of whether he's. I think he probably still will be a first round pick. But like, oh, I don't see any reason why he's not a first round pick. Some people are knocking him down. Well, Maybe he goes early stupid, day two. That's fine, and then, then that's fine, and then I'll just then uh, he's, hopefully I can join some leagues with them, and then I'll take my take my uh, value one Smith and Jigba, and then I'm happy. Well, these are like NFL draft evaluators, not really like dynasty people. But like, so you're probably not getting in the dynasty league. I'll with play guys, with them too. I'm like, sure. Uh, <laughs> But he's probably not going to be the first wide receiver off the board, although I guess he still could be. I mean, let's dive in. I mean, what do you, what well, do you guys think? Well, I mean, just going back to, you know, whether or not him playing or not hurt his stock this year, I'm not I'm not, no, I'm not really sure that it did either. I think it's just the longer that you sit there and you you had a really good ga- good season and then now they have more time to pick you apart. Oh, I'm only a slot, only, only does this. Um, can get caught you know, from behind. If he would have came out last year, they would have been, you know, so excited. Oh, my know? God. I remember mean, that Utah game? You know, yeah. JSN. And people are like, oh, well, Utah was playing a backup running back, a quarterback. So it's <laughs> so it's really just what have you done for me lately? And I don't think it's, you know, I, I don't, I just, you know, they had, they had Marvin Harrison Jr. out there crushing, you know, and, and you know, it, it really the the big question which will never get answered is you know was he how hurt was he was he was he out there concerned that he was, was he hurt or was he injured right and was he was he gonna be overshadowed by maybe some other things going on and have a worse year so hey let's we played this out for a little while i came back and won i got re-injured you know now i'm not going to play for the rest of the yeah. season i'm not saying that's what happened i'm not saying any you know it just it is a possibility of something that happened hey i'm not trying to hurt my draft stock i'm not going to even knock the kid for it necessarily mm-hmm. like you know you, you do what you got to do now i i personally would have wanted to play in a championship game or the opportunity to play in a championship game if he plays maybe they win that game because they lose marvin harrison and they they were right there to beat georgia yeah um so you know i would assume that he was he they had say, to, he says his doctor didn't give him clearance to play well, you know i i can wink wink and handshake a doctor to say after Todd McShay kind of leaks out there that maybe he might be healthy enough to play. Like, hey, Which you got, Todd McShay got crucified. You guys got to co- well, maybe he maybe he was telling the fucking truth then. You know, maybe a lot of the times if you're getting crucified for that like that for something, there was probably more truth to it than there wasn't. Um, you know, maybe. I, and I just, you know, I'm not saying that's what happened. I would assume that if he was healthy enough, he he would have played because you yeah, want I'm that. Yeah, I'm gonna give the your, guy the benefit of the he's doubt. He's like best friends with Stroud. The you boys would, went and stayed with each other's families in the off season. Like I don't yeah. know that he's leaving his boy to hang, but if, maybe. I mean, there's a I lot mean, of maybe money. Stroud on the also line understands here. that hey, I'm about to get paid. Right, but so is Stroud. So true. Yeah, I mean, and I'm assuming these boys are already getting paid too. So I mean, it's not like you know. There's rumors that the the Ohio State Collective wasn't because they, they were talking about. Same thing with Flowers that Harrison Jr. was trying to get poached by USC. Hmm. But that uh, that did not come to fruition. So Right. I mean, they got another great wide receiver there. They've got a great, rich history and tradition of putting out great wide receivers um, from Ohio State. And uh, they're going to keep doing it for the uh, next couple of years. Yeah, and I don't necessi- I don't think this guy's really all that much different. He's just a little bit different than the last one, that just the last two that came out of there. Um, you know, he doesn't do the same things Olave does, but he does some of them. He just doesn't have the, the elite speed. Um, and then Garrett Wilson was was kind of one of the better all around players with with size and speed that came out last year. So yeah. you know, and and can you know plays different places on the field. Um, that being said, JSN was out there like you guys all alluded to when, when reading the stats that 
he went out there and, and outperformed those guys um, on on certain weeks and, and was right there with them and was you know every bit earning targets uh, down the field with yeah, CJ Stroud. Week, and the week they weren't there, he absolutely just went ballistic. Has set an FBS bowl game record for for, for receiving right. yards and and single handedly kept them in and helped them win that game. Like they were down most of that game, and and he just took over. And there was no yeah. question of long speed in that game. Right? No, not at all. Um, just crushed 2021, 112 targets, 95 receptions, 1,595 yards, 16.8 yards per catch, nine touchdowns, six drops, 790 yak, which that's 8.3 yak per reception with 19 missed force tackles. Uh, that Those are really, really strong numbers. I don't know if, the, if his yak ability is representative of that number i don't know if it's quite that good i i think it is i think it is you do yeah, yeah. well that goes against the soft narrative then i, I just imagine. meant soft from sorry i meant i didn't mean soft from a play standpoint i meant soft of his ability to play through injury hmm. willingness to which you know again going back to that is just yeah i'm, I'm not calling i'm not calling him soft right. I, don't, I, I don't i think you should do whatever you think is best for you absolutely yeah you know especially at this point because nothing's guaranteed sure so you know do you nil do you, helps you mitigate that a little bit sure. right because without nil I'll be like absolutely don't fucking play get your money in the nfl <laughs> yeah. yeah but you can get nfl like money almost now in in college at least for a year it's not like the guarantee contract but you know it, it helps curve it a little bit but uh looking at the rankings of those 21 stats right the yak 610 now that's without the bowl game in line so when we do ranking against other players in college we take out the postseason and bowl games to put it more of an even playing field. So if you were on a shitty team that didn't play two extra games, you don't get m- missed up. You know, yep. you don't, your stats don't get skewed. But still fifth in Yak, uh, eighth in Yak per reception, 16 missed force tackles. That's tied for 17th, tied for 45th in targets, 80 receptions, tied for 16th, 1,259 yards. Uh, that's still good for, for ninth, six touchdowns, uh, 3.56 yards per route run that's good for third that's an incredible number now that is filtered at 50 percent of targets because some of them dudes that don't run many routes have a lot you know but like that's a serious number and then caught all seven of his contested targets yeah which there was no player that had a hundred percent contested target catch rate uh so anytime there was a contested catch uh, i think he did drop a cut he didn't get a couple of contested catches in that bowl game so that for for that year it wasn't a hundred percent but just for the regular season, yeah, incredible. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to note that there was that he was at 57 first downs, uh, good for eighth, and I think that is very indicative of what his game is and can yep, be at the absolutely. next chain level. mover yep. um, with with a little bit of with pizzazz. Little bit of yep, right. So you know, I, I thought that was a, you know an important stat of of and and kind of showing you what he can do and what yeah. what is it. I mean, to have. I mean, I mean, bring it back to a fantasy perspective. I know that points per first down is becoming more in vogue with right. leagues now as well too so. so guys like slots who can who can move the chains and score touchdowns like i don't think he's not you know he's route running ability is is very good yep. um and you know diving into some of, did you have did you have something else you no, want to get to I'm good. okay so di- diving into you know some of the things that he does on the field like anytime that i did really see anybody really down on him it, he his release and his hand fighting was so good and quick that like yeah. he really it really didn't affect him all that much like he good gets fo- up good footwork yeah, too. great footwork he really gets up on guys and doesn't give them a chance if you're playing his own he knows exactly where to sit down how to sit down uh he just knows how to work the field and where to be on the field yeah, um, oh yeah i totally agree with that he was always seemed like he was open and even when stroud was under pressure in 2021 it seemed like Yo, they could have thrown it to him on every dang play. Yeah, he he is always open. Always open. 7-11. Yeah. Easiest comp. I think all those things that make him good sometimes doesn't transfer over for some reason, but I think all those things that make him good, the the fluidity in the hips and all that kind of stuff, um, I think that transfers right over into the yak game. There's there's plenty of games where you can just his manipulation skills are very, you know, just he'll lean the body one way. And then it's just a quick pivot of the hips going back the other way to just kind of signal to you that maybe he's trying to get to that boundary, but never, you know, and it's just, it's such a quick decisive movement. um, When when he makes those, right. When he makes those cuts, it's not like a big gear down. Now, maybe some of that is because he isn't absolutely flying. um, Right. 
But, you know, that's not yeah. going to be his game. That's okay. Keenan Allen has made a living off of oh, a 4740 from the combine or something ridiculous. 464, four, yeah. Um, yeah. Four, I, think six. Smith, I think Smith and Jacob wasn't running faster than that. Yeah, no, no. I, I think he'll be faster than that. He certainly doesn't have the long speed to, to put the nail in the coffin. No, but um, the short area burst. Sure. Right? filthy. Like, you can catch him, but he's already eaten up a chunk amount of yardage. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned... the. You mentioned, like, he's killing your leverage as a defensive back. Like, he's just leaning into you and getting you off balance. He comes across your face. Like, he's getting you twisted and turned around. He's always wide fucking open. The idea that he isn't athletic is preposterous, and I, he's fluid and nuanced. I think that's getting misconstrued. I, I don't... I, maybe some people don't think he's athletic. I think it's just that he's not going to be that athlete... At the athlete... <laughs> The elite <laughs> athlete, uh, athlete that, that maybe would make you the best player in the entire league. But I mean, he's in PPR. This guy's, you know, the short I like other the, bit of athleticism is, is really good. There's just a little gear missing. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. I mean, NFL draft buzz dot com. Shout out to NFL draft buzz dot com has him at a 40 time of 4.48 seconds. If he runs a, a, a four, four, you're saying four, four, eight. There's no mm-hmm. way. If he runs a four four eight, things are going to be just dandy for him. Yeah, um, his stock, he will be the first wide receiver off the board. Uh, well, that there's a, there's a, I, I, obviously Johnston didn't do anything in the national championship game, but like he 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 may, you know, profile as they don't really care about, you know, what he maybe that he's not the best route runner. He's six four. He's really fast and he can do a bunch of different things that that maybe get overvalued or. or more valued by the actual NFL draft and NFL teams because, like we're talking about, you don't need to be that big, but it's a real bonus if you can get the guy who's really that big and turn him into something, sure. you know, really prolific. So yeah, you can, you you can't make a guy be bigger, right? Um, not saying that he should be or that he's better than him or any of those. I mean, one ninety seven is still he's thick up, you know. This yeah, dude is yeah. Sure. a hoss. Like, yeah, no, I I I like most everything about JSN here. I mean, there's. There's really not any reason to knock him down. 45th in targets, 5th in yak. You know? Right. Yeah. What, what? Where would you guys kind of have a, a JSN right now? In, in the NFL draft first and then in, in rookie drafts? I think in rookie dra- I think in the NFL draft, he's going to be a top 20 pick. Yeah, I would I would probably tend to agree. It was just a passing league. You need wide receivers. There's there's some there's some pretty good ones in this league or in this draft. And then, you know, it, it does seem to dry up where there's the running backs are a little more potent this year. Yeah. So the fact that 85 percent of his career in the slot, that's not going to detract. I don't, I don't, I don't really understand why you're worried about that. Again, I'm not this worried is a, about it. That unless much. he goes to the Ravens, then it's a kind mm-hmm. of a bummer. Uh, but, you know. This, this dude Everybody is a else luxury. is playing a bunch of fucking Well, 11. we don't know that. The Ravens did just fire Greg Roman today, so that sure. could change their entire offense. But and, and I doubt it's going to change it that drastically. But right. this guy is a luxury to have in the slot. Yeah. Oh, for, for sure. sure. You know, just a luxury. Yeah. Just a, a blessing. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. I said, I think I think Keenan Allen kind of, the, the way he moves about and does this thing, I, I think that's... You know, and he's and he's slow, slower guy, but that has not affected Keenan. The only thing that ever held Keenan Allen back was some injuries. Yeah. Other than that, he can fucking to, 100 balls a year with both hands. If he has to do it with one hand, it isn't happening. <laughs> I don't have a. I, I didn't think Keenan Allen was the best comp for him. No, I, I I like it. No, I think he's more athletic. I had him more in the Amon Ross St. Brown category. Yeah, sure. I mean, if he's anywhere near that, then which he didn't really fast up. forty, no, right? No, not at all. Doesn't they're they're similar the, in stature. I thought he was a bit more athletic, Amon Ra. A bit more athletic. It's probably a little thicker and taller than Amon Ra, too. I just think, I just, I think again, I'm just talking about their, pl- their play other. styles. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I just like the designation of Keenan because I just, I think he can catch a million balls. But I mean, yeah. uh, St. Brown's on track to catch a million balls. Yeah. 5'11, uh, 197. Not be overly athletic. Basically the same thing. Yeah. Jackson's six foot six foot 190, 197. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I like that. Um, and then as far as the... Rookie, Which maybe cuts a little weight and run a little faster. As far as Could. the rookie draft, probably wide receiver one to three. Yeah, probably somewhere in the, in the I don't know, four to seven range. Mm-hmm. Four to eight range. Four to eight range. I think that's and probably flex. Yeah, depending on what's going to happen with these QBs. I have no idea what's going to happen with Levis and Richardson. Right. All the QBs are going to come down to draft capital. That's really it. There, there isn't mm-hmm. much else... Uh, 
to it really like that's you know i'm terrible at making evaluations on quarterbacks it's the least strong thing that i i think i do it's it's really fucking hard the nfl still can't fucking figure it out if they can't figure it out what yeah. the hell do i your know boy, your boy todd mcshay said that he had willis as a top top prospect who he thought should play all year long and that clearly not the case on either one of those fronts but. yeah I mean, I think Willis still has some tools there that they need to de- develop. Sure, right. but he's clearly not ready to play. No. Nope. The boys went with Josh Dobbs, signed off the someone else's practice Dobbs squad. Dobbs didn't look bad either. Threw his first career touchdown. Just really, somebody to be able to manage that fucking offense. rocket scientist. Yeah. That's a guy. Yeah, he better be. That fucking <laughs> dome is a, looks like a Q-tip. <laughs> smart guy. It's very smart. Um, sure he's not rocket surgeon? No, so scientist. Do you have any... any uh, Comps, draft, NFL, not uh, rookie draft. I, I can't say I have any comps. This man is Jackson Smith and Jigba. You know, I really don't. I'm not a big fan of the comps. Oh, but uh, people love the comps. I know. They want comps and projected landing. Where where would you love to see him go? I'd Who love to see him go to the cares? fucking Chargers and just clean up for Keenan Allen when he's fucking out of there. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Or and like Back to the slot thing real quick. Like, why do we care? What, I don't care. care. Who cares? Uh, why are we not? Why would that People be a huge seem knock to care. for you? I, I don't know. Because he's yeah, not going to be all, on the field. Because he can't be out of the field with two wide receiver sets. I hate to break it to you, but there's a bunch of your favorite yeah. receivers that probably aren't yeah. on the field for Keenan Allen snap. is out there on two wide receiver and sets. I promise you that. People hated Jarvis Landry for eight years, even though he caught 85 plus passes. Well, the A dot was bad, so he couldn't be any good. Jarvis Landry is why I hate the A dot, <laughs> and why I hate the mention of it. I and mean, why I will drink every time it's said. I, I, you can't drink to your own you saying a dot. N- sure I can. JSN is definitely a better Jarvis. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely more. Bigger. Jarvis. Bigger. Bigger. Better, thicker. Thicker. I, I thought Jarvis was pretty thick. but Jarvis is a hoss. He's a handful. Um, what do you got? I, I'm I'm ready to go. Uh, I, no, I, no, no comp. No where you're picking him. No nothing. No, I mean, I agree with the with the draft range. I mean, okay. I don't know. I'm excited to get into Allison or Addison and, and Quentin. To see if I'd rather have those guys over this guy. Downs. I'm curious to see where Zay Flowers ends up getting drafted because you could put him up in this discussion if he if he gets the capital, you know, and and gets some buzz and runs a fast forty, you know, like all these guys are pretty good. I'm I'm in, I'm intrigued, very intrigued. CCC very intrigued. I you think know, it's only had the one year production. Slot receiver, a little slow. That's really the only the knocks. Combine. Everything else when the combine is like they, February fifteenth or something. It's always that weekend somewhere around there. So it's yeah, I, I, I think you know you were talking about how he's not athletic and people are mad at him. I, I, I think it's more one of those. It's one of those fake outrage things where I don't think there's really that many people that are that upset about it. I see mostly positive things about how everybody likes Njigba, and then there's like some people being like, just you know, I, I see it all the time where it's like the the talking about how people are sleeping on this guy and like i don't see anybody actually talking about how they're sleeping on this guy this is what seems like one of those scenarios Call that where a straw man I, I think everybody's gonna end up really liking jsn and there'll be a couple people who just want to be contrarian and say that i don't like him because he doesn't hit some silly threshold um and it only plays in the slot so you know i, I think this guy could be easily be the first wide receiver in your rookie draft at, or, or the third the fact that we Wilson, got, we got quarterbacks, wide wideouts on Saturday and running backs on Sunday. What date? The fourth and the fifth of March. March. Yep. The fact that Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave would say that he's better than them. When have you ever heard a wideout say that someone else is better than them? Ever? When anyone's talking about Jerry Rice, but other than that, not really. <laughs> right. <laughs> like or, or Chase Randy Claypool Moss. declaring himself as the third best wide receiver in the yeah, league. Well, like, I also, I th- it depends on the personality of those guys. And, well, they're and, all and, and and the way their group interacts with each other. So that's a cute story and all, but I don't really put much weight in that. It's cute. Brian Hartline agrees. Oh, I mean, that's good. Brian Hartline's been having having you know great success. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I'm not hating on. I like you. <laughs> I'm not hating on Heartline or any receiver coming out of there. It's a, it's a good story. I like it. They're the new wide receiver U for sure. Clemson had it for a minute, but now yeah. it's Ohio State. Yeah, now Clemson can't find a wide receiver. We got, we got, uh, we got some rookies. That... All right, well, that's going to wrap up JSN. Ah, damn it. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, we got flowers in front of this one, so... If, you, if you're just checking this one out and haven't seen Flowers, go back, check that out. Subscribe. You can get all our content. You can go to patreon.com, join the Discord. 
um, doing some extra shows over there these days. Um, yeah, had a great show on Monday. Be sh- yeah, for sure. Be sure to be sure to subscribe so you can keep getting these profiles. We're gonna you know probably get to about twenty or so of them. Uh, before we get to the draft, and then we'll do as many as we can, and then it'll just be we'll do as many as we goddamn want to. That's what we're gonna do. Then we'll be on the rookie mocks, and I'd love to do more than we'll be able to. We'll so. do the sure. We'll, we'll hit you with the industry mock again. When we'll get a bunch of other guys and get their opinions. We got Angelo coming on, and like two or three other uh, new guys to the show coming on to talk prospects. Um, I'm sure we'll get your boy Riley back. It's gonna be the Shrine Bowl next week. Yeah, we can get the, we can get a, sh- a Shrine Bowl report uh, from. Shrining <laughs> Old uh, Riley Master Bye Bay. Master Oh yeah Alright Until that time though Oh hit us in the comments With somebody with Some guys you want us To talk about Cause you know Absolutely tell Who me, should we do next Tell me who you want to see Maybe Rasheed Rasheed Rice Dan Addison Addison I think all those guys Are on the docket for sure Quentin Hard hitting Quentin. Carlos Quentin Quentin Johnston. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're Peace. out.